Hello, in this video lesson, I'm going to show you how to shoot and process a photograph to capture detail in the brighter highlights and in the shadows. So here we have a high contrast scene and I decided on location to set the camera to manual and then set the exposure to capture detail in the brighter parts. As a result, the shadows and midtones here are much too dark and underexposed, but with a little bit of processing in the camera raw editor in Photoshop CC, you can bring back much more color and detail, such as the beautiful purple heather and the yellow bracken in the Derbyshire Peak District. Let's go back to the unprocessed version and you have to be quite brave and confident with the camera raw format because when you shoot like this to capture the highlight detail and then view the image on location, you can barely see any detail in the camera's viewfinder in these darker parts but it's much easier to restore shadow detail than it is to restore highlight detail, which is why we're prioritizing the exposure to capture the highlights. So in Photoshop CC, if you go to File Open and browse to your raw start file, it will open up in Camera Raw. And we can see from the histogram, we've got lots of strong shadow information, but not much midtone detail. If we move over to this part of the histogram, you can see that a little slider is appearing there with a left and right arrow, and it's saying shadows below it. So that's gonna control the shadow slider. Click and drag to the right, and you can see the shadow slider is lightening itself up. Now it's moving to the right, and there's more detail appearing in the shadows and in the histogram. We've now got more information showing up towards the middle of the histogram rather than just bunched up towards the left in the shadows and the blacks. So already we can see with the naked eye, we've got much more detail and color appearing in these shadows. We could have just dragged the shadow slider to the right as well, but it's nice to know which part of the histogram you're working with because you can then edit more accurately and understand what's going on when you're changing tones in the image. So we've brightened up the shadows without messing around with the more correctly exposed highlights. Now we can move over to this section here and you can see this is the highlight section of the histogram and we can drag that to the right and that's gonna make brighter highlights or drag it to the left and that's gonna darken the highlights a little bit more. It's always worth ticking here to turn on the highlight clipping warning and then if you drag the highlights too far to the right, you'll start to see clipped or blown out highlights in patches of red. So let's drag to the left again until we've got just a hint of clipping there, a little red patch on the far left, and we know that we've got some bright pixels in the picture, as well as some dark blacks at the other end of the contrast spectrum. Let me just drag that to the left there. There's some darker shadows. You can see clip shadows by clicking here. And now if I drag in the black section here, go a little bit further to the left, you can see blue clipping patches appearing in the darker shadows. So let's just take that to the right slightly. So we've got a hint of clipped blacks there. So now I know I've got some dark pixels and some bright highlights in my photographs. So we've got a nice range there of tones and a nice healthy contrast. So we know that the sky is fairly correctly exposed, but we could add a little bit of drama by using a graduated filter. This is something I do like to do with skies. And that's like putting a neutral density filter over the lens there, a graduated one. If you click and drag down there now, you can draw a nice graduated filter and then drop exposure down just to darken the areas at the top towards the green bar like so. So something like that should give you a little bit more detail in the highlights. You can also claw back more highlight detail as well using this slider here. Click on another tool such as the zoom tool to get rid of the graduated filter. And then when you've lightened up underexposed shadows, you often reveal some colors that you couldn't see before and the colors can look rather drab. So I'm just gonna finish off by dragging vibrance to the right there now to create some nice vibrant heather there and bring out some of the beautiful colors and details in the shot, thanks to selective color and tonal adjustments. And before I go, I'm just gonna pop to the HSL grayscale panel here, go down to blues and just drag this to the left to change the hue of the blues to a slightly cyan tint to give it a slightly retro analog cross-process look that kind of suits the picture postcard style scene that we're looking at. And I always like to look at the before and after version to see the unprocessed version captured in camera and then the developed version produced by editing in the camera raw digital darkroom. So that's a little bit of photography technique and a little bit of darkroom processing as well. But if you want to take your Photoshop skills further and produce more creative and artistic results, then click the little link at the top there and that will take you to my iBook on photo painting in Photoshop CC.